guys, it's Mars. I'm back for another episode of the Brown Brewery Chronicles. This is episode four. I'm recording on Friday night, February 12th, and I just had an urge to talk about all the woolly things and some other creativity from the last couple of weeks. I'm just getting back from uh, what felt like the edge of doom. I was sick for more than a week. You know how you get sick and you start out feeling symptoms and sometimes it takes you a long time to admit that you're really not feeling well? Yeah, I was probably sick for about two weeks and waited quite a while before I went to get medication or went to be seen by a doctor. So I suffered unnecessarily for a lot of days. So I'm feeling very grateful right now to be feeling more like myself than I have in a while. And just uh, was also very grateful to have time to create and knit and draw and do other things when that's about all I had energy for on some days. So I wanted to share some of that with you. I'm so lucky to have so many people to connect with that I think it's really feeding my love of creativity more and more through Instagram and Ravelry and um, just text messages with friends. I'm finding lots of opportunities to create. So I'm gonna share with you some things that I've finished recently, some things that I have in progress. Um, both on the knitting side and on the painting and drawing side, just some of my activities in making all the things recently. So we'll get right into it. This woolly pile that I showed you a moment ago represents some finished objects, and not all of them were finished by me, which is a real treat. I'm going to start with something that was actually made for me. This is a chunky knit Mobius style scarf. It was made for me by my friend Millie. I'll have to get some of the specs on the yarn that she used, but it's totally a season for cowls lately. So this is my recent favorite. I actually had an opportunity to wear this during a work trip and I didn't want to take it off. It is so soft and so squishy and the color is amazing. The beautiful thing about having friends who love to make things is that you get to appreciate the item itself and then be reminded of that friend when you wear the item, which is like a bonus. I love that. So thanks to Millie for that. Um, she's a fairly new knitter and we've had lots of really cool stitch chats since she started knitting and I'm, I'm loving that. I love the ability to reconnect with her that way. Things that I've been making, if we stay on the cowl theme, the neckwear theme, um, we'll talk about the one I'm wearing in just a little bit. Actually, let's talk about that now. So this is actually a scarf. I'm wearing it sort of uh, looped as a neck warmer um, shortened scarf, but it's actually quite long. And this is another item that was made for me, and this pink theme continues, but I um, got this from a friend of mine by the name of Tanya. She goes by Tango Diva on Instagram. You should check her out. She's a great maker, very creative. She designs, she knits. Um, she made this, I believe it's made out of silk and bamboo, and um, it's got some gorgeous drop stitching in it. I mean, this is some serious time-consuming work, but it is very soft to the touch. Feels so good on the skin. It does keep you warm, but not too warm. So I've actually used this for airplane travel. I travel for work and airplanes are always cold. so. It's a great travel companion, and it's got some beautiful fringed edging, and I just love the colors. I have two of these, one in a solid black and this one. So I love wearing this, and again, it reminds me of um, a really good friend of mine and how talented she is. So yes, on the theme of neck warmers, that has been something that I've been doing a lot of in the making um, these last couple of weeks. This project is one that I, I'm calling the Vintage Hybrid Cowl. Vintage because it's made out of Barocco Vintage Yarn, which is primarily alpaca with a little bit of acrylic in it. And uh, I chose this sort of bluish teal color 
um, for a friend of mine, Mary Ann. I'm making this, uh, I've made this to give to her. And I call it the vintage hybrid because it actually contains some crochet. This is the crochet cameo. So we have a hybrid of knit stitches and seed stitch in this center circle. And then the rest is crochet on the outer edge. It's one big circle. So it's a hybrid because when I started making it and I was knitting the seed stitch, I love the look of it for the texture that it gives, but it was such a tight knit stitch that I really wanted something more open so that it would drape as a cowl. You could wear it on your shoulders, you could wear it as a long scarf, or you can just cross it right here and double it and wear it as a cowl. And however you wear it, I wanted it to have some nice drape. So I had previously made the soft stitch cowl. And so this is from the soft stitch. This stitch here, the crochet on the outer edge, is from the soft stitch cowl pattern. And I'm just gonna take a look over here so I don't mess up the name of the designer. It's by Elizabeth Pardue. Um, she is on Ravelry and the soft stitch cowl pattern is on Ravelry. It will be a little different from mine, but it is a long drapey cowl that uses this particular crochet stitch pattern. Highly recommend it. It's a free pattern. Um, so download that and try it out. I really like how this came out. I think my friend Marianne will like it. She lives in Texas and I think she'll get some use out of it still because it's February and it's quite cool. Uh, in most places in the U.S., even in the southern U.S., like where I am. Um, keeping with the theme of cowls and recent finished objects, this is my Adama cowl. Some of you know this cowl pattern. I've heard several podcasters talking about it. I actually heard about it by way of the Stash and Burn Ravelry group. Stash and Burn is one of my favorite podcasts. It's hosted by Nicole and Jenny. Um, they've actually been podcasting for nine years. It was recently their nine year anniversary. It's amazing. It's an amazing amount of commitment um, to uh, another, what I consider a craft, the craft of podcasting and putting out great material. So the Adama cowl is a pattern that is, um, it's not a free pattern, it's a paid pattern, but it's totally worth it. It's by Hilary Smith Callis, and she has a lot of cowl patterns that I would love to try. Many of them have this really cool construction effect. If you can see, this middle portion is where the cowl begins. And it starts out like your standard triangular shawl. And then you join it in the round and begin knitting the stitch pattern. Um, I can't recommend this enough. I've actually knit it in a yarn that was deep in my stash. I've had this yarn in my stash now for um, quite a while, several years, and I was so happy to be able to find something um, that I thought was a good fit for it. I used size 9 needles, and this is considered an Aran weight yarn, so a little bit heavier, and that made it fly. I knit this in two days, and if you know a knitter, you know that when we say two days, we don't mean we actually spent 48 hours knitting. But um, in two days worth of knitting time, which equates to a few hours, I was able to finish it and I love it. And I started wearing it before I even blocked it because it feels very soft. I love the stitch pattern. And because it's knit with that really cool construction, you have the option of different ways to wear it. So it can be worn as a V-neck, sort of a shoulder shrug, mini poncho type deal or as a cowl the way I was wearing it before, draped around the neck. You can wear it with the V in the front. Switch it and put the V at the back so you have a little bit more of that beautiful center stitching right here on the chest. It's a little more draped. So lots of options. The yarn is Queensland Collection. Queensland Collection Katmandu Aran. So this is considered, as I said, a worsted yarn. I'm sorry, an Aran yarn. This is a little heavier than worsted. And its content is 85% merino, 10% silk, and 5% cashmere. And that 
you feel every bit of it in this yarn. I actually love wearing it now more after I blocked it because um, it hangs a little bit better. I did open up the stitch pattern a little bit in blocking and it has softened up so much. I almost don't want to take it off again. So that is the Adama Cowl by Hilary Smith Callis. I knit that as part of our February knit along. February is for cowls, is the knit along that's going on in the Stash and Burn Ravelry group. So check that out if you feel like knitting cowls. Lots of people have beautiful finished objects in there and great ideas for cowls to knit. This is an older item, still in that theme of neck warmer. And I really wanted to talk about this one a little bit just because um, I have this obsession with not having leftover yarn. And so cowls are a great way to stripe leftover yarn and just put yarns together. Here I put together a Malabrigo worsted. This is all deep stash stuff, meaning I've had it um, for a long time and I'm always happy to find a way to use yarns that I bought a while ago. So this is Malabrigo Worsted in Azul Bolita on the bottom. And then this was a Schoolhouse Products yarn in the middle. It's a really, um, it's a little bit of a coarse wool, but it's a really colorful, bulky weight wool. So the cow has a worsted wool and a almost super bulky wool mixed together. And there's no pattern to this. I just started with a little bit of ribbing at the bottom and then I increased a few stitches to do plain stockinette. And you can see it kind of gets a little broader in the stockinette portion. And then I literally cast on, joined in the bulky wool. And then I kept going until I ran out of both types of yarn. Um, I love putting yarn to good use, even if it's only a little bit left or not enough to make a bigger project. And so I decreased towards the top so that when it got to closer to my neck, you could really see how it, pulls in a little bit. So if I was just holding these two balls of yarn together, I might not have thought of using them in the same project, but because I love to use up the yarn and, and get creative sometimes with that, I think it worked out really well. So definitely a neck warmer theme. Um, another favorite recently, which you know from my previous episodes, is hats. I feel like I just want to knit all the hats. And because there are so many cool knit-alongs happening right now on Ravelry, I'm finding that between the forums that I like to visit and the podcasters that I like to listen to, there are all these great groups of people knitting the same things that I'm knitting. Neck warmers, hats, socks. And it's keeping me motivated to do those projects. So hats are part of um, a little group that I started through the Wooly Wormhead group on Ravelry. Wooly Wormhead is a, she's an amazing hat designer. Um, you should check her out on Ravelry if you can, or online at woollywormhead.com. We have a small kind of subgroup within her Ravelry group called the Wooly Dozen. And the Wooly Dozen is a group of knitters who have the intention of knitting 12 hats in 12 months. So about an average pace of one hat per month over the course of 2016. It's going great so far. It's only February and we have over a hundred projects already tagged with Wooly Dozen and there's great conversation in the group. So if you're into knitting hats, Wooly Wormhead has over 200 patterns available. Trust me, there's a hat in there that you would love for you or for a gift for someone and it's a great group to be part of to discuss different yarn options and hat patterns we want to try. She has some brilliant construction and techniques that are new and fun, so I, I highly recommend that. Um, along those lines, one of the hats that I knit for the Wooly Dozen is called Dulcy. And this hat has a really interesting construction. Um, if you follow me on Instagram at HeyBrownBerry, you'll see this hat in progress, quite a few pictures of making this hat. It's a sideways knit construction, which is something that I had never really known about before I found Wooly Wormhead. You essentially knit the hat back and forth. You can use straight needles or, you know, circular needles without joining. So you knit back and forth. This one happens to be knit back and forth and the right side is actually the purl stitches. So it's like reverse stockinette. 
the stockinette being on the inside of the hat. This is the way it's modeled and worn. The shaping of this brim and the poofy part at the top is done with short rows. And by way of knitting this hat, I learned a new technique for short rows. They're called German short rows. I found a video tutorial on YouTube for using German short rows instead of the standard wrap and turn for short rows. So if some of you have done short row shaping before, you're used to uh, wrap and turn method and picking up wrap stitches. Well, German short rows changed my whole perspective and opinion on using that for shaping. I use them throughout this hat. The hat, after it's knit back and forth, is joined. And you can't even see my seam where I did a Kitchener stitch to join. You wouldn't be able to tell where it is in the hat. Sorry for that slight interrupt, guys. Um, uh, as I was talking about my Dulcie hat by Wooly Wormhead, just letting you know that I'll put some information in the description about German short rows and this particular pattern. I think you'd love it, and many of the hats out there are lovable. I have a couple more that are Wooly Wormhead designs as well, but these are a little smaller. Uh, my stepdaughter is having a baby soon, a baby boy, in March, and I've gotten on a baby hat knitting kick. Um, this one is another Wooly Wormhead pattern called Tubi. You may have seen this one online. I'm going to show you a picture from the pattern page on Ravelry. Hopefully you can see that well. So this is a pretty simple knit construction, but it's part of a whole collection of hats from Wooly Wormhead for babies, infants, babies, even toddlers. Um, some of the hats go up to a pretty decent size, between 15 to 18 inches, a lot of them. Um, so it's a collection that I highly recommend because there are so many different styles of hats for little ones, and there a lot of them are unisex. Um, and they're quick knits. So I love the instant gratification of baby hats. That's really compelling because with a little bit of yarn and a little bit of time, you get something that's great for gifting um, and just fun to knit. So just showing you some of the examples of different hats in this collection. The collection is called Wee Wooly Toppers. So if you look for that on Ravelry, I'm sure you'd find a baby hat worth knitting. I own the whole collection. Um, because I want to try a lot of them. Another one that I made uh, was this one, which is called Kabooter. So this hat is, again, a pretty simple construction, but with a really cute design detail of a cable that runs up both sides. And then a bonus I-cord little, uh, little topper on this one, which I think on a baby head is just gonna be adorable. I made this one significantly larger, so um, you can always gift this one and it can be put away for when the baby grows a little bit. Um, the baby has a big brother and a big sister, so I think one of them could even wear this hat. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to meeting him and covering him in hand mitts. That's um, one of the wonderful things about having lots of people to love and knit for. So that last hat, Kabooter, this one, has in it some deep, deep stash Plymouth Encore yarn, that green yarn. And when I first started knitting with that, it was from a skein that had been a, a project that I had frogged. I took the project out, pulled the yarn out, and I just started knitting with the yarn. I didn't do anything with it. It had been caked up and it was all kinky from having been knit before. Um, so I learned my lesson because that did not block out really well. There's actually some parts of the yarn that show the wear and tear of having been knit before and didn't really even out, even with blocking. So I learned my lesson about that and soaked the remainder of that yarn that I had and let it hang to dry. And even still, because it's not an animal fiber, there's still quite a few kinks left in there. This yarn has some acrylic content in it, and acrylic doesn't really block out very well, but it's a lot better than it was. It used to be much more crinkly. So I'll use this, you know, I don't like leftovers, so I will use this yarn in another project. Um, you know, it doesn't show up too badly, and honestly, people who don't knit probably wouldn't even notice. They'll think it's bumpy yarn, but I like it better now that it's been washed and. Uh, blocked out a little bit. Uh, this is another yarn that I did the same thing with where I 
unraveled it from a project, but the difference with this one is it's got alpaca content. And so when you soak this and let it hang to dry, it behaves uh, straightened right out. So this is gonna be much more useful now. I can reuse it. I love the idea of kind of recycling this into another project. So just uh, set that aside for when I decide to stripe something or make another baby hat. My sister-in-law is also having a baby in March. I'm a very lucky knitter. So I think this color would be great for a baby hat for a little girl. So that's some of the finished objects I have. Um, it's kind of cool to be surrounded by yarn in here that's been made into things. I'm also surrounded by yarn that has not yet been made into things. So let me show you guys what I've received in the mail over the last 10 days or so. I am finding that uh, the more you talk about the fact that you make things, the more people volunteer to be someone who you can make things for. And uh, some of my friends and even colleagues have asked me about making things. So I'm gonna show this as a big pile because this is like what the mailman has brought me in the last few days. And then I'll show you each item. Uh, I have a couple friends that I'm making things for. So the yarn you're about to see is for what I call commissioned knits meaning that um, someone has asked me to make something for them. And I didn't have yarn in my stash, shocker, in order to make what they wanted. So I had them pick colors and so on. I'm making an Elizabeth Zimmerman very warm hat. This is a two layered hat. Um, it's often made with at least two colors, sometimes more. And essentially you knit a pretty standard stockinette toque style hat and then if you've done a provisional cast on you can undo that provisional cast on and with those live with the stitches live you then join um, another color yarn and knit another hat so if you imagine knitting a hat up this way and then from that bottom edge you knit another hat down this way one hat can be tucked into the other and it becomes instantly reversible these are the school colors for a colleague of mine that he chose, black and burgundy. Cascade 220, an old favorite. I'm gonna really enjoy knitting with this because I love the colors, I love this yarn. The hat is a very simple Netflix knitting type project where I won't have to think very much until I get to the shaping. It's all gonna be pretty smooth sailing. So another commission knit is two pairs of socks. Now these are gonna be knit primarily by my daughters um, they also have YouTube channels, by the way, Meezy Bear Salas and Dachi Ducky. I'll link to their sites. Back again, so sock yarn for my colleague. The girls are raising money for a trip they're taking this summer to a conference called VidCon, where they're going to see YouTubers that they love. These are the yarns for those socks. Bright. Patton's Croy in a rainbow. And this one is Regia Floromania color, recommended by my friend Shamika from Mika Mika Shop on Etsy. Um, I purchased these from different places. I got the Regia from Webs, yarn.com, and the Patents Croy, which comes highly recommended by a lot of knitters. A lot of people who know their sock yarn recommend this Patents Croy. I actually got that from Craftsy. Craftsy is an online site that has um, a lot of great classes uh, for different crafts and you know sewing, knitting, and other making type classes like baking and hand dyeing. Um, this came in the package that I ordered from them. I didn't know until recently that they had yarn available as well and supplies and books and so on, so I bought some from them. Um, so we're looking forward to knitting with these. It's gonna be fun to knit and that's always great when you really love the yarn. Speaking of yarn that I love, if you follow me on Instagram at Hey Brownberry, um, it's pretty clear to you at this point that I'm a huge, although recent, fan of Lolo Did It hand dyed yarns. Shout out to Lauren at Lolo Did It. Um, she's at L O L O D I D I T at Etsy. I'm currently working on a shawl, which is called Trillion. Trillion is a shawl that's from a very popular designer. And she, um, I'll get her name in just a moment. So she 
has lots of patterns. This is Martina Bame. I hope I'm saying that right. She has lots of patterns for shawls that I love because you don't need a specific weight of yarn and you don't need a specific amount of yarn. So you could go one skein or multiple skeins and that just determines the size of your shawl. So for Trillion, I started knitting in Lolo Did It Everyday Sock Yarn. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the colors in here so much that I couldn't bear the thought of wearing them on my feet. So I decided to make a shawl so it can be close to my face and that you could see all the colors. And so it's working out really well because I started knitting it. It's a light fingering weight yarn and I started knitting it in size three, US size three needles. But it was taking me a long time because it's so tiny. The needles are tiny and the yarn is quite thin. So I just, without changing anything, started knitting on size five needles. And I like that a little better. It was moving a little faster but I'm impatient, so I decided to double the yarn, and that's why I have this little thread hanging here because I joined the outside of the yarn ball and the center pull part of the yarn from the ball, and now I'm knitting with both strands. So I like that on the size five, and I moved up to a size six, and then I got really impatient and moved up to a size eight. So what you see closest to the cable here is knit in a US size eight, uh, five point oh millimeter needles and now it's flying along i just did this you know in about 30 minutes i added this section here so i can still see all the beautiful colors um, it's got that great speckled effect the pattern itself is great because it does have a little bit of detail with some lace edging so that's fun and the needle size now means that it's going to finish really quickly and i'm going to use the entire ball for that 463 yards lolo did it everyday sock yarn She's on Etsy. And this color, as I said, is Monster Mash. Big fan. So um, here it is stained up. I'm finding that I'm most excited to knit with the yarns that I've gotten most recently. I guess that happens. You know, it's new, it's exciting. And I'm also kind of trying to retrain some bad habits I had when I started knitting. Um, the idea of a yarn that's too special to work with, I'm trying to just get rid of that whole concept. If I love the yarn, I'm gonna cast it on and get it wearable or giftable as soon as possible. I'm hoping I can stick with that so that I don't just end up with a whole lot of stash yarn that's sitting around looking pretty. So I think that's good enough for yarn chat for this time around. Um, I do have some other things that I wanna talk about that are not knitting related. But I think I'm going to save that for another episode. That has more to do with the other creative outlet I have recently, which is painting and drawing. And I have a really fun um, sort of collaborative project that I'd love to share with you guys in my next episode. But that's it for now. I hope you've had fun uh, diving into all the, the wooly things with me. I appreciate you guys coming to check out this video. And I'm so grateful to have a community of makers to share with. I hope you keep watching. Um, I don't have a schedule right now for when I post videos. I'm thinking every two to three weeks is pretty reasonable with my other things that are going on in life. And uh, I love hearing from you. I love comments. I will link in the description where else you can find me online. And I'd love to connect with you. Happy making. I'll see you again soon. Bye.